You might not think about it this way, but our relationship with energy governs every part of our daily lives. From the energy used to take us places to the energy we use to heat or cool our homes, power our appliances, and yes, even communicate with each other. Energy, be it in the form of fossil fuels or electricity, is the very thing that makes our modern life possible. As the old adverts used to say, electricity is your electrical servant. So when your power goes out, it really sucks. At one point in time, when much of what we did in our spare time didn't rely on electricity, it wasn't the end of the world. Homes were heated by burning wood or coal in stoves, children's toys didn't require electricity, you probably had some form of dead tree-based reading material, and the internet? Into what now? I know, I'm showing my age, but even though I'm joking just a tad, today's modern world is so much more energy dependent than the world of yesteryear. <laughs> Frankly, even the world of just 20 years ago. I don't know about you, but while I'm more than happy to break out a book when there's a power cut, both of my children when they were growing up would act like the world was coming to an immediate end if the power was out for just 10 minutes. And yes, I'll admit, even I feel the twang of withdrawal symptoms when I can't log into Twitter, check the news, or play an online game. So if you live somewhere with regular power cuts, you might have the ability at your home to plug in a backup generator using a special transfer switch to isolate your home's electricity supply from the grid, but also allow you to keep electrons flowing. I mean, if you're really posh, you might even have an automatic generator that kicks in the moment the power fails. But let's face it, if you watch this channel, the chances are you're interested in or already own some form of electric vehicle, having decided it's time to dump the pump and go with a cleaner source of power for your transportation needs. So the idea of powering up a noisy fossil fuel generator might not be your idea of a good solution to the problem of power cuts. Thanks to Tesla and other companies out there, battery backup systems for the home are becoming increasingly popular. Be they DIY affairs made by stringing together lead-acid battery packs with off-grid inverters, or fancy, expensive Tesla power walls, these stationary backup systems can help you get through a major power cut or a storm with at least some amount of electricity. But unless you go full DIY, the chances are such a system will cost you big bucks. I mean, when we spec the 15 kilowatt solar array for our home this year, you can see a video about that here and I'll link to it below, we looked into the cost of a battery backup system for our home and we found it would pretty much double the cost of our project based on our needs and the fact that we have off-grid water pumps and off-grid septic systems. Luckily though, there is an alternative, vehicle to home or vehicle to load, a concept that allows you to power your home from the battery pack in your car or at least power some essential appliances from your car, turning the vehicle you drive on a daily basis into a makeshift power station for emergency use cases. It's something that's becoming increasingly popular in the automotive industry. Thanks to the new eGMP platform developed by Hyundai Kia, both the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6 have vehicle-to-load capabilities included as standard from the factory, and the upcoming Lucid Air sedan, upcoming Ford F-150 Lightning, as well as the Volkswagen ID3 and Volkswagen ID4 are all planned to have some kind of vehicle-to-home connectivity in the near future. And of course, in some countries where the Nissan Leaf is sold, you can already install a bi-directional Chademo charging station that operates in vehicle-to-home mode. But while more and more automakers are becoming serious about V2H and V2L technology, some electric vehicle companies, most noticeably Tesla, are vehemently against it. Elon Musk has even stated that he believes using your car as an emergency power station is not a great idea and could be detrimental to your car's health. And that's led a lot of people to claim that vehicle to home is pointless, ineffective, or just dangerous for your car. So today, I am going to go through vehicle to home and vehicle to load technology. I'm gonna explain what they are and what they aren't, and detail why, for most electric vehicle owners, these are useful utilities that you might want to consider adding to your home. A utility that frankly shouldn't affect your vehicle or its battery pack in a negative way. And no, I'm not talking about plugging in a 12 volt mains inverter into your car's 12 volt battery system to keep your fridge running in an emergency. Although, if you'd like to learn how I did just that when a storm wiped out our power for a few days, you can find the video here, also linked below. 
I'm also not talking about vehicle to grid, where your car is connected to the electrical grid and feeds power from your car's battery pack back to the electrical grid in peak demand periods to help the local utility cope with peak loads without needing to fire up an additional peaker power plant. I'm talking about your car automatically providing power to appliances in an emergency, or at the very least, coming with an onboard integrated power inverter that allow you to power essential appliances in an emergency without requiring any Heath Robinson connection schemes. So let's start with the basics. Every electric car on the road today comes with an onboard charger. That charger is capable of taking the mains electricity from the charging station or even your granny lead EVSE and turning that into DC electricity that is stored chemically in the car's battery pack. And some cars even come with DC charging connectivity that allow high power external rapid charging stations to feed high power DC electricity right into the battery pack. Most EVs, if not all modern EVs, then take that DC electricity and turn it back into AC at just the right power levels to make the motor spin, thus moving your car along the road. And that's where it stops for cars without vehicle to home or vehicle to load technology. But cars with one or other technology have the ability to either use the car's charging circuits to feed power back through the charging inlet into a special two-way power station, or use the car's motor controller circuitry to funnel power back through the power inlet. Or maybe they have a dedicated onboard power inverter specifically for the purpose of providing mains power to an appliance. At this point, I should probably make a clarification. At one time, electric vehicles had distinct charging circuits and motor power inverter circuits, but these days, some electric vehicles use combined charging and motor power inverter circuits. That's thanks to advancements in power technology and frankly, the cost savings that combined units can offer. So it is very quickly becoming the norm. And I should note here that when it comes to the difference between vehicle to home and vehicle to load, it really boils down to how the power is exported from the vehicle. Vehicle to home systems allow you to power your home using the battery pack in your EV, often automatically, to ensure electricity is provided by your car in the event of a power failure. Vehicle to load systems require you to manually plug in an additional cable when you need the car to provide power. It doesn't automatically kick in, and instead of the many kilowatts of power usually offered by vehicle to home systems, vehicle to load systems usually max out at about one or two kilowatts of total power delivery. But there are some swings and roundabouts here. A vehicle to home system requires you to have a special vehicle to home capable charging station installed in your home, along with an automatic power transfer switch that can detect when your electricity grid goes down, isolate the home from the grid automatically, and then instruct the car to start feeding power to your house. As you might have seen in videos provided by Nissan showing such a system in operation, these charging units are usually larger than a standard domestic charging station, and they usually require some modification to your home's electricity supply. We know, for example, that Ford's newly announced Pro Power Charging Station, which comes included as standard with the Ford F-150 Lightning Pro, will require some extra electrical gubbins at your home in order to work. The same is likely true for Volkswagen's planned V to H charging stations, but don't quote me on that. This means, if I'm honest, that vehicle to home systems probably work best when you own your house. Vehicle to load systems, meanwhile, might be best if you rent or you don't want to make permanent modifications to your home, and they'll still happily get you through a few days of power outages if all you need to do is to keep the fridge running to stop food spoiling, keep appliances like cell phone chargers and modems running, and provide power to a few emergency lights. Vehicle to home, meanwhile, can provide much higher power. Which brings me to the question that so many people have. Won't all of this damage my car's battery pack? The answer, thankfully, is a resounding no, especially if you're using your car in a vehicle to home or vehicle to load rather than vehicle to grid situation. Although, to be frank, even when a vehicle to grid system is used, the amount of power going into and out of your car's battery pack is still relatively small. Nobody is pulling 60 kilowatts out of your car instantaneously and feeding it to the grid. It's usually a few kilowatts max, and that, in the grand scheme of things, is a very small amount of power. And frankly, most of the time, they are micro transfers of a few watts here and there throughout the day. That's certainly nothing that will damage your battery long term. 
With vehicle-to-home systems, the drain on your car's battery pack may be more continuous when the system is active than, say, vehicle-to-grid. But again, it's far lower than the battery drain associated with driving. Take the Ford F-150 Lightning, for example. We know its vehicle-to-home system will draw about 9 kilowatts max, which is enough to power most appliances in your home with no worries, even perhaps some water pump systems. But if you consider that the 9 kilowatt draw from the battery pack is far lower than the 300 kilowatts or more the truck will draw under full acceleration, or even the several hundred it will draw doing steady cruising on the highway, we shouldn't worry. In other words, the drain from driving the truck and the stress that puts the battery pack under is much, much larger than the drain from using your truck to keep your home running in an emergency. The same is true, in fact, more so for vehicle to load systems. Because the drains there are usually measured in one or two kilowatts, the drain is so small compared to the car pulling full acceleration that the battery pack shouldn't be affected in any noticeable way, even for extended periods of time. So to the final criticism that some people have, that using a vehicle to home system would run your car flat, leaving you stranded. But the reality is a little different. Most vehicle to load and vehicle to home systems have fail safes to make sure that your car doesn't drain itself completely empty. And it keeps enough reserve power in the battery to get you somewhere to charge. That's either based on a raw percentage that you can set, or in the case of more advanced systems, however much power the car thinks you need to get to your nearest functional rapid charging station. Some have criticised this approach, stating that using your vehicle to power your home or specific appliances could leave you stranded in an emergency. And for sure, if there is a fire raging nearby or there's a flood on its way to you, you will want to get out of there ASAP. But for many power outages caused by things like snow, high winds, or yes, even an earthquake, things that might end up keeping you at home anyway, this frankly shouldn't be an issue. And let's face it, most power outages do occur in situations where you don't actually need to evacuate. So that's it, vehicle to home and vehicle to load in a nutshell. Let me know in the comments below if it's a feature you'd be interested in seeing in your next car. That's it for today. Please do hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't, as it stops YouTube from doing weird things with our content. Make sure that you're subscribed to Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts as well. There are links below. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew go out to the folks on my right. They are our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. That's Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Anonymous Freak, Ray Jean Fellows, Carl Hodgson, Gordon C., Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Denny Hyde, Sean Ueda, and Tesla in the Gong, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. They are John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you would like to join the ranks of wonderful Patreon supporters, you will find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Kofi. You can chat with the team and TE fans over at Discord, and if you would like to buy some TE swag, just head over to our Red Bubble store. Our new Pride designs, just like the one I'm wearing, are now in stock, and all proceeds from the sale of these t-shirts goes this month to The Trevor Project. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!